My name's John, welcome to yet another Sunday Night Nightcap. Tonight's Nightcap is nearly all machining, all lathe work, a little bit of welding, a little bit of build-up welding, uh, some tape I turned in, some screw cutting, some internal screw cutting. I repaired a, um, a drill, a drill spindle, the end was damaged and I, well, I repaired that for a lot. I showed quite a lot of that. Uh, all weekend I've been away in Beamish with Richard with a steam wagon. I get some video of that and I get a lot of video of uh, two local motors that were there as well. As you can hear my voice is uh, a bit worse than it normally is. I think I'm coming down with the, the dreaded man flu so I'm sure you'll all appreciate exactly what I feel like. There's a little bit of your meal coming in this week. I'll show you that one or two very nice, very useful items. These arrived in the post this week. As you can see, they're horizontal cutters. There was no name uh, associated with them, but thanks very much. Uh, they're much appreciated, and they're certainly going to be getting a, put to good use once I get the, the new mill up and running. This nice drill chuck also turned up. It's a German chuck. That's the same taper. It's a 30 national taper without the driving dogs on, so I think I'll be able to utilise this on the miller machine as well. You can tell it's been on a like a CNC or a quick change tool post by that, tool holder by that. It hasn't actually got a chuck key. What it's got is an Allen key hole on the side. And use an Allen key to open and tighten it. It's really smooth. It's like a really nice chuck. The drill chuck was sent in by Bespoke Metal Fabrications. I'll put his website and a link to his YouTube channel in the video, it's certainly well worth giving him a look, he's got some really interesting stuff on there. Anyway, once again, thanks very much for that drill chuck. Um, I hope to either modify it or adapt it, or possibly it might work just the way it is, just gripping on the taper. Anyway, thanks very much. This is a drill spindle out of an old English drilling machine. As you can see, the threads have been well bastardised, badly damaged. The tape that the chuck fits on is marked, but it's still there. These threads are now in existence, and all are four. When the chuck goes on there, there's a nut that screws down to push the chuck off. Inside of here is also a one more taper socket, so you can use more taper drills as well. I know what taper it is, I've got a, I've got a spare arbor. I think it's a JT6. What I intend doing is machining these threads off welding it up, remachining it and putting the thread back on. I'm not sure about the tape out whether to machine the tape or off, weld it up and remachine it, or try and save it and polish it. It is quite badly damaged. I think once I'm welding it I might as well carry on weld it with build it up with weld as well and remachine it. I have got a number one most tape a reamer so I can clean up the bore in there. I'll bring the camera a little bit closer so I can see what's actually happened to it. As you can see it's a proper mess. Uh, the lad bought the drill in auto jumble without a chuck on and there was some tape wrapped around there so he didn't didn't know it start until he got it home. That bearing would probably be alright to leave on to weld it up but I think I will take it off if it'll come off easily then it means I can chuck on this part here. Held on by a, a sewer clip. Once again, I'm showing up. I mean, like a sewer clip pliers. That's it. The thrust part of the bearing. It just lift off, which it does. It's actually got root on there, made in England. Actually got a bronze instead of plastic race. Right, this bearing here will probably just tap off. I don't think it'll be that tight. Give it a tap with a soft hammer, yeah, no problem. Yeah, 
so now we can see the the damage in all its glory that looks like EO and F thread I'll probably just put a fine metric thread on and make a nut to suit just grip it in the, in the collar chuck for the minute obviously when we come to the machine it's that can grip on here on the forge or chuck Right, I'll measure that thread first before I machine it off. Do a little drawing just so I've got the, the sizes of it. I'm getting to read the 18 point. 18.6, 18 18.8. It'll be 3 quarter. Originally it'll be 19, 19 mil, 3 quarter. So we'll call that 19. Just gonna machine the threads off back in these cheap metal. This is quite hard as well, it's not your normal being hardened. So I don't want an H key metal so I can get a good weld on it. I think I'll take this up as well and redo the tape on as well. Do it all in one, do I make as well. Both controls the, the saddle and the carriage hand here at once. Do a bit of money with CNC. I've got no choice now but to, to weld it up. That's built up with stainless. I'll be enough on there to turn it down to get my 19mm thread on and also to get the taper on. This is the taper I need to put on the end of the drill spindle. The taper is actually a Jacobs JT6 from what I can gather. I've got a JT6 chuck anyway that fits onto there. So what I've got to do is set the compound slide up to cut that angle. What I have done is I've set this tool post parallel to the edge of the compound slide so if I simply run that along there it's touching that face all the way down that's going to get us very near I think you can see better there how it's it's touching all the way down so that gives us a good starting point put a little nip on the Compound, and we'll put the clock gauge on and dial it in. The way the camera is there, you can see the, the face of the clock gauge, no problem at all without putting the polarizing lens in. Right, so if I wind the compound slide 
up the taper. The idea is that that should remain constant, it shouldn't move. That moves the bastard. Right, we'll nip it out a little bit tighter so it can't. Right, so we zero it there. It's getting near now. Right, that's good. I'll lift the tool up on the top on the compound side of that, then we'll try it again. Right, they're tightened up. Zero. Zero. I'm happy with that. Like I say, any better, and I have got the gauge with no innards in. So now that compound slide, hopefully, will replicate that taper. Quite a lot of material to get off to take off this, but it's surprising how little it takes on a taper. I've just turned that tip round, it didn't look warm, but it's certainly cutting a lot better on a nice new, a nice new corner. It's looking good now. Right, we're getting somewhere near now, it's starting to grip quite nicely. I'll put a little bit of marking blue on it. And that's good, it's all the way down the taper, quite happy with that. I'm basically going to leave the, the taper like that and when the lad gets a new chuck I'll lap the chuck on the, onto the taper with some very very fine lapping compound put that that's good next thing is put some threads on there and make a nut all the nuts for is to push the push the chuck off the taper. Up this wheel here, it's actually in my one most taper, but it's done it no good at all doing the welding. There's one or two places where it's actually come through. Um, I can get a reamer. I'll try a reamer in there, but I think it's going to be just used there with a, with a drill chuck on it. On the original thread on here was 3 quarter UNF. I can cut 3 quarter UNF on this lathe, 
but it's a bit of a slag around, so I'm just going to do it in metric. That's actually 19 mil in diameter, which is basically three quarter. So I'm going to make a 19 by 1.5 mil pitch, and I'm going to call it my thread. So it's a 19 by 1.5. So probably in 70 or 80 years time, when somebody else comes to refurbish this, they'll measure the thread and wonder where on earth it came from. The 1.5 mil thread is going to be 1.5 mil deep. That's 0.75 per side. I've got enough material to do that. So we'll set the lathe up to cut a 1.5 mil pitch thread. I've got my screw cutting tool in here with a metric insert in, 60 degree insert. I've got the compound slide set at 30 degrees, well it's actually 29, which is half of the 60 degree thread. I need to make sure the tool is on centre height, which it is. And I also need to make sure that the tool is square to the job, so it cuts a nice square thread. 